Water means life, it means everything. And when this valuable resource is being confiscated and used as a political weapon, it sets the stage for what has been called water wars. Add to that other restrictions like trade route accessibility, border violations, well, that is called complete economic encirclement. That appears to be what is happening to Iran through Turkey, mainly under the watchful eye of the U.S. with Iraq and Syria suffering as collateral damage. Hello and welcome to Economic Divide. Some of the highlights of today's program, Turkish water terrorism, water dams that Turkey has built, Tigris and Euphrates rivers, one example, destructive impact in Iraq, Syria, and also in turn, Iran. Then we move to another area that uh, Turkey is contributing to uh, water restrictions, and that's the cooperation that it's having, in this case, one of them being the Afghan government, both past and present, building hydroelectric power plants in that country, and the political alignment uh, with Central Asia, Azerbaijan, and Pakistan. And our next highlight uh, concerns overall how Turkey is making anti-Iran moves. You have water and economic encirclement. You have anti-Iranian Zangazur corridor. We'll tell you what that is. And also trying to remove Iran's trade routes from China through to Central Europe. Turkey's southeastern Anatolia hydroelectric project is one of the largest and most controversial dam building programs to date. A total of 22 dams are slated to be constructed along the Tigris and Euphrates rivers near Turkey's borders with Syria and Iraq. The Tigris and the Euphrates cut through Syria and Iraq all the way to the Persian Gulf. Thousands of downstream communities in these countries rely on the rivers for irrigation, drinking water, power generation and transportation. Turkey has built a greater number of dams on the Aras River, which flows into Iran. From 2012 to 2014, Turkey constructed six hydropower plants on the Aras and is currently planning eight more. It is feared that the projects in Turkey will result in the drying out of three Iranian provinces. The project, once fully implemented, would affect the three Iranian provinces of West Azerbaijan, East Azerbaijan, and Ardabil. The objective appears to be to heavily pressure downstream countries and cause political, economic, social, and security problems for them. Time not to find out what's posted online on this topic. We went directly after websites because they uh, gave the best impression as to what's going on. First up, water crisis and drought threaten more than 12 million in Syria and also in Iraq. The Zangazur Corridor, Iran's gateway to Europe or Turkey's highway to Tehran, a little known 27 mile long border between Armenia and Iran to have become the epicenter of a potential conflict between Iran and Azerbaijan that pretends the onset of the much-anticipated effort by Israel and the West to prevent a nuclear Iran from becoming a reality. Then, Iran in South Caucasus, turning losses into wins. Determined not to be cut out of the South Caucasus, Iran is forging strategic ties with both Baku and Yerevan. We went on to say resetting relations with Azerbaijan is obviously key, one of the highlights of this entry. Also, Iran's peacekeeping policies to prevent another war between Baku and Yerevan. And finally, Iran has not been pushed out of the South Caucasus. And in our last entry, uh, Foreign Minister criticizing Turkey, the Foreign Minister of Iran and Afghanistan, over water rights. He has said Turkey needs to pay serious attention to the construction of the dams on the Aras River. Also, the Kamal Khan Dam, the Helmand River water rights, in accordance with the 1973 agreement. As I said, these websites gave an impression as to what's going on with this topic. All right, time for our first uh, Q&A of this program. Uh, our first guest is Ashok Swain. We picked him because he is the UNESCO Chair on International Water Cooperation. 
pretty appropriate for this topic, don't you think? And he's also the professor of peace and conflict research who joins us from Uppsala, Sweden. Ashok Swain, welcome to the program. Um, you know, a general question uh, when it comes to the West Asia region uh, in terms of how susceptible it is to water wars breaking out due to war water sc scarcity. Um, what is your assessment on that? Because we're seeing lots of tensions break out because of water accessibility and the hoarding of water by a country like Turkey, uh, as one example. Uh, the West Asia and the Middle East is actually a water scarce region uh, in general. Uh, there is a less water. Uh, but of course, the kind of things which we are talking about, there are many, the, the main rivers are uh, transboundary in nature. Uh, and they go across into different uh, geographical area. Uh, particularly the rivers, which is the major rivers, are the Euphrates, Tigris, which is shared, uh, Turkey uh, and uh, Syria, Iraq and Iran. And I think this is where, uh, well, water is scarce, upstream development taking place, there is a large demand for agriculture, and then also the climate change is bringing a huge uncertainty of water availability on the downstream. All right, thank you for that. So we got the professional technical uh, mm, viewpoint there from our guest, Ashok Swain. Uh, let's get a more political uh, economic uh, analysis. Dr. Ash, I'm sorry, Ahmad Kazemi joins us. He's uh, got a doctorate in international relations, and uh, his research uh, is uh, on in Eurasia with a specialty in that geographic uh, region. Dr. Kazemi, welcome to Economic Divide. Uh, Turkey uh, has cooperated, many don't know this, with both the um, governments that existed in Iraq, one that is uh, the interim government now uh, of the Taliban and the previous government in the fields of dam construction and also when it comes to construction of hydroelectric power plants. Uh, through this, they've strengthened uh, their, their cooperation, uh, both politically and in terms of security. Uh, but it comes uh, at a cost in terms of Iran. Can you please explain the motivation behind Turkey's cooperation when it comes to uh, dam construction and otherwise with uh, Afghanistan? ببینید به این موضوع از دو زنبه میشه نشاره به این موضوع میشه از دو زنبه در واقع نگاه کرد well, this can be looked from two angles. Turkey is supporting the U.S. policies, which has created tensions in the West Asia region, like in Afghanistan. During the 20-year U.S. occupation of Afghanistan, the most investment that the U.S. made was in the construction of dams with Turkey's cooperation. They wanted to use water as a means to exert pressure and a weapon on Iran through Afghanistan. Second, Turkey is after showing uh, good intentions on the surface. Its approach toward mutually owned water resources in relations to international law, whether it has to do with legally monetary obligations or what is common as international obligations, Turkey does not abide by them. Turkey is going after its own interests by using dirty politics. This is why in Afghanistan and other countries in West Asia, it has made investments. Anyway, the mutual use of water should be fair and equitable. Time now for the Infonews section of the program. First up, the BRICS 15 summit. Yes, this was a big deal. BRICS inviting six countries, which included Saudi Arabia and Iran, to join the bloc. It was a historic development and a strategic success, especially when it comes to Iran and its foreign policy. Therefore, a special report on this. What do you think? The BRICS group of nations on course to change the power balance in the global energy market not to mention maybe the global balance when it comes to politics. Expanded BRICS to dominate global energy markets and will control half of the world's total oil output. Just some of the angles we'll be looking at in our special investigation and probably the next episode of Economic Divide will be on this topic. Now, uh, this has been called Bidenomics by the U.S. President Joe Biden, uh, but is it something that uh, is working or will work? The U.S. President says that he is staking his re-election on an economic policy that's called Bidenomics, um, that's driving Republicans crazy at the same time. Uh, basically, uh, it's, quote, an agenda designed to help regular people directly instead of trickling down from the well-off. Now, our take is, why has it fallen flat for rural Americans? Uh, for example, inflation is another area in terms of it falling flat, where four and five 
are reporting paying higher prices for groceries and gas. And uh, the cost in terms of uh, biodynamics for the fiscal year 2023 is expected to produce $1.54 trillion budget shortfall. I don't know about you, but biodynamics doesn't seem to be taken off um, if it has taken off at all. Next up, uh, this particular piece of news is interesting because it shows how uh, somebody can take advantage of a bad situation. And it's the, the case of the former U.S. President Donald Trump, who has taken his mugshot, that picture which I'm sure you've probably seen by now, and how he has monetized it uh, to his own benefit. Uh, now, the image is going to be used on Trump uh, 24 T-shirts. And uh, in order for you to get your hands on one of them, he's asking for a $47 donation. Leave it to U.S. President Donald Trump, former U.S. President Donald Trump, to ask for uh, a donation while handing to you a T-shirt with his mugshot on it. That does it for our Info News section. Uh, some pieces of news we picked for you, but we would appreciate it more if you pick some for us and send them to us. Contact information is coming up. Time now for the in-depth section of the program. Iran has been one of the countries in the world which has a geographic location that makes it an ideal choice for transit of goods, thus making it a transit hub. But there are countries like Turkey who have their own ambitions mixed with political ones who want to deprive Iran of its rights. We're going to cover that in this section of the program. First up, let's take a look at this map. Iran opposes what's called the Zangazor Corridor since it claims that the opening will lead to the closure of the Iran-Armenia border. Iran considers this initiative as a Western NATO project to encircle Iran, Russia, and also China. Iran does not want to lose its position as a transit country connecting Azerbaijan to Nakhchivan. Iran is also concerned that the border region through which the Zangazor corridor will pass will indeed be a de facto in terms of it falling under Azerbaijan's control. And that's something that Iran wants to eliminate. All right, let's move on to the next map. This closure of this border region is also another concern for Iran. Sisson sees it as uh, Turkey's way of uh, wanting to, in a sense, prevent Iran to have access to the European markets, which is supposed to have, based on what you see over here, China's One Belt, One Road initiative. You see that area uh, in the blue of coming from China? It comes and goes uh, on the northern part of Iran, then through Turkey and Europe. It's a crude map, but that route is the land route. Uh, the one in the green is uh, what's called the uh, Maritime Silk Road, the other one being the Silk Economic Belt. Okay, let's move on to the next map. Lots of maps for this section, uh, which uh, shows the other destructive role that Turkey plays when it comes to Iran in the context of dams. This is the Tigris-Euphrates Basin, uh, where from the top you can see uh, the Euphrates and Tigris rivers flowing. And uh, here you see what's called the Ilisu Dam, okay? It's just one example of uh, how this is at the mm, center of it causing uh, the river downflow not to reach countries like Iraq, like Syria. And it cuts off the water downstream, creating water shortages for these countries, and also Iran as receivers of the river's downward water supply availability. As a result, there are protests uh, that have happened in Iraq and Syria over this. Don't forget, the war on Syria, in a sense, started uh, from uh, water shortage, okay? And this clearly illustrates that. Those are some of the protests in terms of the stars. Now, next up, uh, what do we have? Another map, yes. Well, this one um, shows how Turkey has had cooperation with not only the current interim Taliban government in Afghanistan, but also with the previous government of building dams in that country, some of which Iran has water rights to. In this case, it's called the Kajaki Dam, as you see over here. Uh, that's uh, one of the disputes that Iran has, uh, which when you put all these together, what we have just shown you in terms of the different uh, maps and uh, the restrictions, it gives the impression that Turkey is trying to restrict Iran's water rights and also trade routes as a whole while creating stress for Iran's economy. All right, moving on to the next uh, map that we see over here. What do we call this? This is called uh, a map of how Iran 
uh, can be a transit hub because if the adversaries of Iran think that they can defeat and restrict Iran's economic reach and potential, they're surely mistaken. This is called the INSTC. Now, what is the INSTC? In terms of that, uh, I want to cross on over and talk to Mahdi. Mahdi it joins me right now. He is going to tell us about that which is coming up in this quick take section. Mahdi, what do you have for us? Hi, Kaveh. The INSTC, which stands for the International North-South Transport Corridor, is an example of Iran's ability to become a transit hub. I'll tell you all about how this also beats U.S. and European sanctions. All right, thank you so much for that. We do appreciate it. Um, that is a big deal, again, showing Iran's potential, not potential, the fact that it is a, a transit hub connecting it to the rest of the world and making an ideal choice in terms of transiting uh, and having trade routes going through that. Let me introduce, uh, reintroduce our guests uh, and see what they think about all of this. Um, we have Ashok Aswain, UNESCO Chair on International Water Cooperation, who rejoins us. Ashok Swain, welcome back to Economic Divide. Uh, Turkey has built two very large dams that we just covered at the Tigris and Euphrates rivers um, that flow into Iraq and then Syria. The disaster, however, that's inflicted on these two countries uh, has caused huge uh, losses economically and also uh, to Iran in relation to the construction of, of the drams on the uh, Aras River. Uh, do you agree the destructive consequences that Turkey's dam building has had on the population and the countries of the, uh, of the three countries that I mentioned? Yeah, as I mentioned, that I think the Turkey has been uh, carrying out this massive uh, multi-purpose dam projects on, on the upstream of Euphrates Tigris. Uh, Turkey's argument has been that it wants to develop that area. As one of the argument is that it is it's a, it's a, it's its own water because it's a upstream country. Second is that in that area it has to develop because of the its own internal conflict. But that doesn't make sense because, the, as I said, there are a number of uh, three countries at least in the downstream, and it has they have to be taken into account. Their interests have to be taken into account, and uh, particularly uh, the. Uh, Syria and Turkey, they're ex Syria, Syria and Iraq, they're extremely dependent on these two rivers. And of course, Iran has a 10 percent of the basin within the uh, Tigris side. So, so it, it, in summer, when the upstream uh, taking advantage of upstream location, uh, Turkey uh, blocks the water uses the water for its own purposes, that affects the water supply. And Iraq is facing a serious, serious problem in the, particularly for so long period of time in the South Swamp land. All right, thank you very much for that. Let me bring uh, um, Ahmad Kazemi into the picture here. He's, uh, got, he has a doctorate in international relations and uh, research with specialty in Eurasia. Ahmed Kazmi, Dr. Ahmed Kazmi, welcome back to Economic Divide. You know, uh, we want to take a look at Turkey encircling uh, Iran. Uh, it has done so based on what we're presenting um, uh, in water, economic, political, and security terms. And basically, it's uh, one of the uh, opposition that Iran has is uh, this um, corridor, which uh, it, is, it is opposing. Uh, a corridor by the name of Zangiz Zangazor. Tell us what you think about that and whether Turkey is actually doing that, be because in some sense it also prevents goods and energy uh, mm, from China to Europe to be stopped where Turkey is enacting its restrictions on Iran. <laughs> The truth is that from two years ago, uh, from the time the second Nagorno-Karabakh war broke out in 2020, a geopolitical sedition took place by NATO and the UK who initiated it and named the Tehrani NATO affair. Turkey was a broker for NATO, including for Israel. This plan and the repercussions in terms of transit and energy restrictions for Iran only would be a mistake. This was a NATO plan against Iran, Russia and China with the goal of transit, energy issues and activities against these three countries and the explanation of NATO regionally with the aim of harming Iran, Russia and China. Turkey then, as a NATO member, plays the role of a broker for the organization. Turkey has also been involved in dam construction projects in Iran's neighbor Afghanistan. 
Ankara has worked with the government of Afghanistan's former president Ashraf Ghani and the Taliban, who currently rule over the Central Asian country. The second phase of the Kajaki Dam was constructed by a Turkish company for $160 million. <laughs> The dam controls the output of the main watershed, which feeds the Sistan Basin, which ultimately runs through Iran's Sistan and Balochistan province. It appears that Turkey is trying to strengthen its commercial, political and security relations with the countries of Central Asia, as well as with Pakistan, at the expense of Iran. And all of this under the watchful eye of the U.S., which has led some to conclude that the U.S. may have a hand in this economic strangulation. Ankara is also adamantly pushing to open an all-Turkish corridor in the Caucasus to remove Iran from all routes for the transfer of goods and energy from China to Europe. Azerbaijan's victory in the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh war created a new reality on the ground. Through a transit corridor awarded to Azerbaijan, Turkey would potentially regain direct access to Turkish estates in Central Asia. The project would deprive Iran of billions of dollars in revenues every year. The potential bickering between Turkey and Iran would be to the benefit of the U.S. Hello and welcome to the Quick Take section. I'm Mahdi Aposyan. When it comes to restricting Iran's economic activity, whether it's Turkey or the U.S., no country has been able to restrict Iran's trading abilities. Iran has turned itself into a regional transit hub. Take the International North-South Transport Corridor. The INSTC was established by Iran, Russia and India in September 2000 and subsequently expanded with the admission of 13 major corridor members such as Azerbaijan, Armenia, Turkey and the observer membership of Bulgaria. The INSTC connects India to the Caspian Sea, Russia and Northern Europe through Iran. By bypassing the Suez Canal, the route is 40% shorter and 30% cheaper than traditional routes in terms of distance and time. Iran's President Ebrahim Raisi has also spoken about the serious pursuit of the government's plans such as the Chabahar Zahedan Railway and the connection of Oman Sea and the Persian Gulf to Europe in order to strengthen the transit position. The development of Chabahar Port, the formation of the Macron Coastal Development Organization and the special plan for the development of Macron are parts of Iran's plan to become a regional transit hub. Iran's airports are also undergoing significant upgrades. Both Chinese and Russian contractors have been retained to develop 116 Iranian airports in stages over the next two decades, which would add to Iran's use as a transit hub. Iran just announced that it has contracted the development of the Imam Khomeini International Airport to Chinese contractors. The cost will be about 2.5 billion euros, the amount of which will be provided via the oil bartering deal with China. And finally, call it fate, but the Ukraine conflict has reportedly resulted in a surprising surge of trade flows from Europe to the east and south via Iran. Given sanctions on Russia, consignments are being diverted via the international north-south transportation corridor. Iranian goods transits has experienced a 52% increase as a result, and this creates a challenge for both the U.S. and Europe, who have placed Iran on sanctions. So, you see, no matter how hard countries may try to block or restrict Iran's trading routes through geography or sanctions, they will ultimately fail. That does it for this segment of the program. Please send us your thoughts on this. Contact info will be coming up shortly. I'm Mahdi Abosian, and I'll see you next week. All right. Uh, in conclusion, I don't think I have much to add uh, to 
to this uh, section because we covered it in the quick take section with Mahdi. I mean, really, when it comes to any country trying to encircle Iran, put pressure on Iran, restrict Iran, whether it comes to trade routes, whether it comes to uh, water accessibility, it's going to fail there. And that's because Iran, uh, being uh, one of the countries that has all these natural resources that can contribute to world growth, um, they're going to fall flat and they're going to fail whoever tries to impose that, whether it's Turkey, whether it's the U.S., whether it's through NATO, uh, et cetera. But what this program covered is how there's so much pressure on Iran um, and how Iran has overcome that in uh, becoming and uh, getting what's entitled to, and that is being a transit uh, center for the uh, transit of uh, trade. Uh, being key and central to where the world trade goes through, especially when you consider uh, China's Belt and Road Initiative. There was a lot in this uh, uh, program, a lot of information. Um, if it was too overwhelming or if it was sufficient or if we lacked anything, please let us know. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Contact information is behind me. Fomi Kavitahwe and the entire team here at Economic Divide, it's goodbye until the next program.